Thank you. We now go to Ms. Ross. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member for holding this very important hearing. I also serve on the Science, Space, and Technology Committee, as do a couple of other members of this subcommittee, and we're exploring this very issue. Um, I understand the potential of AI to launch our country into a new era of innovation. For example, I've heard from healthcare organizations in my district, I represent the Research Triangle area of North Carolina, um, about way, ways that AI has revolutionized their processes, from analyzing large swaths of medical data to informing research to help doctors more quickly log patient data. I also recently read an article about how L AI has helped um, with breast cancer detection and been more accurate even than human detection. Our country has been on the cutting edge of science and technology for decades. And I know that in order to maintain that position, especially when facing competition with China and other superpowers, we need to harness the power of AI. That said, we should not sacrifice individual privacy and intellectual property protections purely for the sake of outcompeting China. Just because China is willing to forego the rights of individuals and creators in the name of competition does not mean that we should lower our standards and risk driving innovators away from our country. Dr. Brennan, access to vast amounts of unique data is critical to achieving high-performance AI models. Can you describe how disparate policies around data collection and access play a role in our competition with China? Thank you for the question, Congresswoman. I think what's important for us to preserve, as you outline, is the checks and balances we have in the public sector on government activities, whether it's the institutional review board process for uh, experimentation with human subjects or the sort of uh, classification methods that we use for our intelligence data. Each of those rules was set up in a time and place to protect not only the civil liberties that are related to them and the rights, but also the, the public service or the public good that's trying to be articulated. And I think just as our government dealt with the digitization of information from paper and memos to the internet and email, we have cybersecurity professionals and policies that can help us properly uh, protect the information. Now there is, uh, I think, a still a, a need for the government to feel more open to experiment. Too frequently we meet with customers and they have this fear that somehow if they bring data together, it will have a different level of classification or something like that, and it just slows down the ability to even experiment. We've seen this time and time again in my own career, and so the government should also continue to encourage proper experimentation with good risk management approaches, such as what NIST has outlined, so we can keep innovating and get the benefits that you identified, uh, such as for medical and healthcare. Thank you, Dr. Brennan. And Dr. Jensen, um, building on your testimony, as Congress considers proposals for AI regulation, including new agencies dedicated to AI licenses, transparency requirements, and compensation for IP holders, and much more, what do you believe is the best way to balance responsible regulation with maintaining our competitive edge? Well, well, thank you for your question and your dedication to this on both committees. I would just highlight for you before I answer that, uh, actually healthcare and public health were the second most targeted thing for Chinese IP theft. Um, so I tend to take maybe a bit more of a free market approach to this, uh, meaning that we have good checks and balances and classifications and we can actually submit licenses. But what you're hearing my colleagues say about doing the right thing and creating overly cumbersome processes really has to be at the forefront of your mind. And the mantra we, we use in my own work on this are standards or strategy. If you set the right standards and the right framework and you let market mechanisms respond to those standards, it becomes a public good that allows for the greater exchange of ideas. And ultimately, as we're seeing, we can't keep having a technological revolution if we over-regulate or curb it before it gets started. So I think the really hard task for you all is what is that balance? 
What does it look like? What is that licensing framework? If I, as, a, as an entrepreneur, have to spend more money on lawyers to basically submit it and protect myself than I do to hire research scientists, I probably have the wrong balance. I think one very simple first step is, is there some mechanism to help small entrepreneurs get tax credits or incentives to actually protect their own IP? It's their baby. They want to protect it, so help them protect it so we can keep moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.